Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Avid Excel, Accelerating Academic Success for Long-Term English Language Learners. We're so glad you could join us. And for those of you watching the recording, thanks for making time to learn more about this important work. Before we get started, here's a little housekeeping. We are recording today's broadcast, and a link to the recording along with this slide deck will be emailed to you early next week. All participants are in listen-only mode, but you can communicate with us in the chat box. We'll have 10 minutes at the end of today's webinar for Q&A, so please submit your questions in the chat box throughout the presentation, and we'll do our best to answer those at the end. I'm your moderator, Kayla Burrow, AVID's Marketing Communications Specialist, and I'm joined by our presenters, Sasha Bennett, the Learning Programs and Products Project Manager for AVID, Diana Fujimoto, the English Learner Services Curriculum Specialist and AVID District Director for Anaheim Union School District, and finally, Minerva Gandara, Director of English Learner Services and AVID in Placentia, Yorba Linda Unified School District. Now, without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Sasha. Great, thank you for the warm welcome and introductions, Kayla. My name is Sasha Bennett, and I serve as the AVID Excel Project Lead at AVID Center. And on behalf of myself and Haley Steele, our AVID Excel Project Coordinator, we would like to thank you for choosing to spend the next hour with us learning about AVID Excel. It is thrilling to see that so many of our AVID partners from across the country signed up for the webinar today. And we hope our time together provides you with helpful information and answers to your questions. However, if you do have lingering questions after, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Our contact information will be on the closing slide. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We have a full agenda and we wanna leave some time at the end for Q&A. So our learning objectives include exploration of how AVID Excel fits into AVID's college readiness system, a discussion of the foundational components of AVID Excel implementation, and lastly, an opportunity to hear from two of our highly esteemed AVID Excel District leaders, Diana Fujimoto and Minerva Gandata. Everything we do in AVID begins with this, our mission. We are constantly asking ourselves, how can we as teachers, administrators, parents, and community members help realize this mission of preparing all of our students for college and career success? Currently, there are over 5 million English learners in our schools. One out of every 10 students are classified as an English learner, though only 63% of our English learners graduate from high school, compared with the overall national rate of 82%. When we say all in AVID, we mean all, including our English language learners. Dr. Lori Olson wrote the foreword of our AVID Excel curriculum. And in that opening, she explains, and I quote, Many of our young English learners begin what will be years of struggle to comprehend the instruction they are given in a language they don't know, amassing increasing academic gaps. The journey seldom results in these students achieving the levels of proficiency they need to be successful in college or in the workforce. They become what are called our long-term English language learners. Our long-term English language learners comprise over half of our classified ELs in our school. And with AVID, when we say all means all, we mean it. So when we talk about long-term English language learners, what are some of those common characteristics? Well, to start, many of them are designated as English language learners for five or more years. So they appear to be stuck or not progressing, not progressing adequately in their language development. And for the most part, guess what? Many of these students were born right here in the United States and have only attended US schools. They're orally fluent in English, what we call basic interpersonal communication skills or BICs. And when we listen to them, it can be deceiving because we speak to them in a social situation and we may not realize that they are English language learners. But what they do lack is the cognitive academic language proficiency needed so vital to success and rigorous coursework and academic success. Long-term English language learners need explicit academic language instruction to help them develop that CALP, the Cognitive Academic Language Proficiency. So in general, long-term English, long English language learners 
also have insufficient literacy in their primary language or their L1. Therefore, making that transference into academic language in their second language or their L2 more challenging. Research shows us that it's easier to develop academic language in a second language if it has already been developed in their primary language. So due to those mitigating factors, oftentimes what we see, we have students who work very hard to stay invisible in school, using their high level of social English to just get by without engaging in class. Or the opposite happens. Some of our LTELs also work very hard to have their teachers pay attention to more outward, often negative behaviors to mask their skill gaps. Thus, Avid Excel. Avid Excel was developed to reach our long-term English language learners and provide them with the language support they need, using Avid strategies as a foundation. Avid Excel's mission is to interrupt the path and change the trajectory of long-term English language learners by accelerating, yes, accelerating language acquisition, developing literacy, and placing Avid Excel students on the path to high school Avid and college preparatory coursework. These students are on the same track as traditional AVID students. They're on their way to the high school AVID elective and in college entrance courses. This is how we measure success with AVID Excel. In fact, last year, the majority of our AVID Excel students were accepted into ninth grade AVID and precisely 96.4% were recommended for college preparatory classes. So how does AVID Excel fit into the AVID college readiness system? So as many of you know, the AVID College Readiness System is comprised of AVID Elementary, AVID Secondary, and AVID for Higher Education. AVID Excel is a part of the AVID Secondary System. It is a middle school elective offering that is parallel to the AVID middle school, traditional middle school elective offering. AVID Excel students, like all AVID students, are on the path to college attainment and persistence. We avoid terms like pre-AVID, or regular AVID when describing um, AVID Excel or the AVID, traditional AVID elective. Essentially, when you bring Excel onto your campus, it's considered an additional section of AVID, and it is fully integrated into certification and data collection. So we have discussed how AVID Excel is similar to traditional middle school elective, so now let's highlight some of the unique components. AVID Excel has four foundational components that work together to serve our students and to accomplish our, mis our mission. One component is our professional learning and support model. AVID Excel includes extended professional learning opportunities for the AVID Excel district leader, site administrators, AVID Excel teachers, and even content area teachers that goes beyond participation in Summer Institute. The AVID Excel district leader receives targeted support from an assigned implementation support provider in the first two years of implementation to increase the success of the program. The professional learning component works hand in hand with a strategically designed AVID Excel coursework, which is aligned to the current ELD and ELP standards. There are digital planning guides that accompany the curriculum that move the students to the necessary levels of language development. And there is a summer bridge component between each grade level implementing. A third component is family connections. We want to include our Excel families from the very beginning and often. They are involved in informal presentations and workshops throughout their child's particip participation in AVID Excel. Another implication of the family connections component is the belief and the practice of including Excel as part of the campus's AVID family, a real collaboration between the AVID elective team and the AVID Excel team is essential. The AVID Excel teachers are active participants in the already established AVID site team. Our last component is by literacy. From the start, we encourage our AVID Excel sites to celebrate by literacy to, to um, explain to our students that biliteracy is an asset. 
we encourage our students to be proud of that and to be proud of them being in Avid Excel. Districts should explore how heritage language courses can be made available to students as a pathway to biliteracy and AP language in high school. Additionally, districts should gather information about their state seal of biliteracy and share that information readily with students, families, and teachers. Okay, so now we've been introduced to the foundational components. So let's take a look at the Avid Excel student profile. Since Avid Excel is an elective class with student recruitment, just like the Avid elective, it is important to know which students are the best candidates for this class. So to begin, Avid Excel students have been in our U.S. schools for four or more years meaning that they're either already long-term English language learners or on their path to becoming long-term English language learners. This is not a newcomer EL um, uh, course offering. On the language proficiency exams, um, our Avid Excel students are scoring at the mid to upper range or could also be recently reclassified students on first or second year of monitoring. On the ELA standards test, they score below proficient at the basic level. They have the desire to achieve and they want to go to college. And finally, they're usually scheduled for general education or integrated ELA courses, but they may require additional ELD support in the day. Our current implementing districts who are finding the greatest success engage in joint recruitment, application, and an interview process between the traditional AVID elective and the AVID Excel elective. The coordinator and the Excel teacher work together to determine the most appropriate placement for the applicants to AVID or AVID Excel. Okay, so let's take a look a little bit um, at the curriculum, the unique curriculum and some of the instructional routines that are found in AVID Excel. So as I mentioned before, there are online digital planning guides available for our teachers, which include quarterly, thematic units, key lesson plans, and pre-created anchor PowerPoints. All of these materials are tied to our Avid Excel curriculum, which is found in two volumes. Volume one being the Academic Language Acquisition volume, which focuses on language and covers reading, writing, oral language, and academic vocabulary. Volume two is our Student Empowerment volume. This includes many of our familiar AVID strategies, all with a language development overlay. So now I will review a few of our key instructional routines, and then we will have an opportunity to hear from our fabulous leaders who are out in the schools doing this work. Um, the first one I want to showcase is word study. This is a key routine that we integrate through all of our lesson plans. Students learn about word parts, origins, they explore high utility academic vocabulary, and they maintain an interactive word wall to deepen their understanding of academic language. A focus, a big focus in Avid Excel is not just the philosophical environment, but also the physical environment, making sure that the environment is supporting language learning. Another key routine is language coaching. In Avid Excel, teachers are active language coaches. Just like a baseball coach or a soccer coach, Avid Excel teachers and tutors continuously provide immediate feedback to students to correct errors or to help coach language sophistication, ensuring that students practice appropriate and accurate formal language. Teachers use both verbal and physical cues to prompt students in speaking in complete sentences, using academic language, elaborating on their thoughts, and citing evidence to support their positions. Our Avid Excel scholars engage daily in intentional structured language practice opportunities. Academic language scripts, for example, are used to provide examples of appropriate academic speech in a variety of situations. Our Avid Excel students are encouraged to use these scripts not only in our Avid Excel class, but in their content classes, which proves to be highly impressive to their teachers and to other students, actually. 
These scripts often find their way onto the back of the school-wide planner and are embraced as a school-wide tool. The final routine I'm going to highlight for you is scholar groups. Scholar groups are similar to AVID tutorials. They occur twice a week and require the support of a tutor, but they have some unique attributes. Scholar groups is when students engage in the critical reading process with a common piece of complex text, oftentimes from one of their core content areas or core content classes. And they complete a pre-work inquiry um, on that piece coming, um, coming up with a point of confusion question, which is essentially a text dependent question based on some part of the text they didn't understand. And then they come to class, they participate in a Socratic discussion about their points of confusion with the support of the tutor. The primary focus isn't solely on comprehension though. It's also on academic language development and application of reading strategies. So in summation, the key distinction between the traditional AVID elective and the AVID Excel elective is that AVID, in AVID Excel, the focus is on language development first. Now it's time for us to welcome some of our district leaders to share some key insights and sage advice from their experience implementing AVID Excel. We'll begin with Diana Fujimoto from Anaheim Union School District. Go ahead, Diana, take it away. Thank you, Sasha. Um, again, my name is Diana Fujimoto, and I'm here to share a little information about my experience as the AVID Excel district leader. Um, and so just to kind of share with everyone, um, we are a very large urban school district um, serving um, over 30,000 students. We are a secondary school district, 7th through 12th grade. We have five feeder elementary school districts that feed into our schools. Of the approximately 30,000 students that we serve, 21% are identified as English language learners, and the majority of those are, are long-term English learners. We do have a very small population of newcomers, but again, the majority are, are long-term English learners. And we are currently in our year two of implementation of AVID Excel. Next slide, please. So just to kind of give you a little background of the students that, the demographics um, of the students, the students that we serve, um, I've included that in the chart here. So um, we have a large population of Hispanic students, and the numbers in parentheses are the students that are in AVID Excel. So we decided um, after careful analysis and searching for the best practices that would address the needs of our long-term English learners, we knew that AVID Excel was the direction we wanted to go. So we decided to go big. And so this um, last, this past year, we implemented in six out of our eight junior high schools there. And again, you can see the majority of our students um, are Hispanic, so um, come from Spanish-speaking families. Uh, next slide, please. Why we decided to go with AVID Excel, as I mentioned earlier, um, having done careful analysis of different programs that are out there to address uh, needs of our, our students, um, again, we have six, you know, over 6,300 English language learners. Um, more than 5,000 of these are long-term English learners, or they are at risk of becoming long-term English learners. And Sasha mentioned earlier the research done by Dr. Lori Olson, who did write the foreword to AVID Excel. And we had some good discussions at uh, the district office, the education division, about what the research says. We dove into the reparable harm report and the secondary schools report. And really based on those elements that were identified as what it is that our long-term English learners need, um, we decided we need to take a proactive approach and really target that seventh grade year. So those students coming into us from the elementary schools. And so we knew that AVID Excel um, takes that comprehensive approach to addressing the whole child. It's not just a program. It is a philosophy. 
and a very comprehensive approach to serving the needs of our students. Um, and so in terms of the current progress where we are currently, what we are finding is that students have um, reignited their passion for learning. Um, students are feeling connected to the school. We have several anecdotal stories of students that we have found are, are those turnaround students who maybe began their seventh grade year a little bumpy, but because of all the elements of AVID Excel, we are now starting to see those students really turning around, re-engaged in school and being successful. Um, what we are also finding is that at some school sites where the teacher has really embraced the philosophy, the elements, the core principles of AVID Excel, that we are seeing some of those translate into school-wide practices. So we're seeing a shift of teachers beginning to be more mindful of language and literacy as a focus uh, school-wide. So it's starting now to go beyond the Avid Excel classroom, and we're seeing that culture shift uh, school-wide. So that's really exciting to, to see. Uh, next slide, slide please. What I want to share with you here is that uh, this is really a byproduct of the explicit academic language development that takes place um, in the AVID Excel classroom along with the embracing of the core principles of AVID Excel which includes strategic and intentional lesson design and being diagnostic. But because the students in AVID Excel do receive explicit academic language instruction, what we have found um, in our most recent data is that our students in AVID Excel are reclassifying at a much higher rate than we have ever seen before. Um, so it, it varies from, from site to site, again, depending on um, the culture of the school, depending on the, uh, the teacher who is in the classroom. But you can see there the number of students that have reclassified for, you know, over the, the total number. So, for example, at one of our school sites that we are finding that that teacher has fully embraced AVID Excel. Um, 39 out of 48 students in 7th and 8th grade have already reclassified. Um, so, again, this is not necessarily uh, the goal of AVID Excel because it is about meeting the needs of the whole child, right? So but this is a byproduct of all the wonderful things that take place in the AVID Excel classroom. So I want to end with the next slide, just providing some uh, words of wisdom or sage advice to those of you on the call who are considering AVID Excel, is that you really need to keep the administrators and the AVID coordinators in the loop, in the conversation. Um, let them know that AVID Excel is something that you're considering, and if you do end up bringing that onto the campuses, then definitely reaching out to the administrators and the AVID coordinators so that they understand what, um, what it is and that it's not competing with AVID. Um, so you want to have those conversations up front that AVID is part of the whole college readiness system. It's another um, AVID elective class. The focus is just a little bit different. It's bringing in that it's that focus, that laser focus on academic language um, acquisition. Um, so that being said, um, having one recruitment process for AVID and AVID Excel I think is really key so that people don't see one as higher than the other. So you want to make sure that as you implement that we are working together, we're in this as a team. And then finally, that AVID Excel teacher selection is key. So I want to underscore that because, and I'll share a quick little story with you. After I had a conversation with a principal at one of the sites we were going to be implementing last year, and he said, well, I have two teachers in mind for this Abbott Excel class that you shared with me. And I have one that is a choir teacher, and I have one that is a language arts teacher. So his um, his instinct was to put the language arts teacher in that AVID Excel class because it's a language, language development class. But his concern was, I'm not really sure if that teacher is going to be able to connect with the students. On the other hand, I have this wonderful choir teacher who is um, who's great with kids, 
who is that nurturer but that and that champion for students, but will still hold them will hold them accountable uh, and is eager to to learn. So my suggestion was go with the one you know will connect best with the students. And so he chose that choir teacher because I knew that in my role, what I was going to have to do was to coach the teacher with the language elements. And I will say that um, she is doing a phenomenal job with, this, with the students in her Avid Excel class. So again, as you consider who's going to be that teacher, keep in mind that yes, we want to have that strong language development teacher in place, but also we need to have that teacher who's going to embrace the philosophy behind Avid Excel. So keeping an open mind of who that might be at the individual school site. Thank you so much, Diana. Um, I especially appreciated um, your mention um, about reclassification, that yes, that oftentimes it is a result of um, students participating in Avid Excel. However, it is not our end goal. We actually do look beyond um, reclassification to high school and then even beyond that to college and career readiness. Um, I also appreciated you highlighting that the teacher selection is key and it really is about the best fit. Um, there's someone who has that shared philosophy and mindset that these students are critical thinkers and they're problem solvers and creative souls and they really simply just need the academic language to be able to express themselves. So I really appreciate both of those. Thank you so much. Okay, Minerva, could you please share with us your implementation tips for our audience? Yes, thank you, Sasha. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is um, Minerva Gandara, and I'm um, Director of English Language Services for Placenta Yerba Linda Unified School District. And I also have been a middle school teacher for approximately, I was actually for about 18 years in our district. And one of the schools that I had, I, I had AVID, well, at both of them, but one of them was a demo uh, middle school. So AVID is very uh, dear to my heart, and so is English learners. So I started with this slide because I wanted to share a little bit about um, the Placenta Yerba Linda Excel journey and, and how we got there. So um, I've been a, a district director for AVID for the last, um, this is start my fourth year, and the same thing as an English learner director. So. Um, when I started looking at our district, I first looked at our district, and we're an average district like a lot of you are. We're a K-12 district. Um, we're we're mid-sized. We have 32 schools, approximately a, almost 26,000 students. So very similar to a lot of districts. If you look at us on face level, we're a high-performing district, and we do very well. But eight of our schools are Title I schools, and those schools look a little bit different than some of our other schools. And that's very typical of a lot of the school uh, districts in California, and I want to say also um, in, in other states. When I started looking at our district and seeing our percentage of English learners and how they were doing, we have about 15%, a little, almost 16% of our total school uh, students are English learners. But that's district-wide, so that was just like the broad look, okay? But then what I knew is that we needed to look a little bit deeper. So the philosophy and the goal of our district, of PYL, is to have all students, all students, be future ready for college and career. And so when I looked at that and we thought about it, all kids. So we started implementing AVID, the AVID system, and so we have it right now in 17 of our schools. And so we know that AVID strategies are great for all kids. We know that it works for kids, but we also know kids are not a one-size-fits-all. And so when we were looking at the AVID piece, it's like I know I had to go deeper and look a little bit more. And so then why AVID Excel? The next slide, please, Sasha. So we look, I looked a little bit deeper, and here is our students just as, you know, our subgroups and looking at which percentage of our kids are meeting or exceeding the language arts uh, standards. These are the California exams that we take the SBAC um, test. And in language arts, if you look at our kids over three years, our English learners, yikes, I had to dig deeper. And so something's happening. They're making some growth, but not at the gains that we wanted. And so I knew that our English learners 
uh, needed something different. So currently, our English learners are not progressing as well as we would like them to progress. So um, we were looking at a holistic approach to AVID, and we were using AVID school-wide. And then I kept looking and digging deeper. So as a team, we looked at our English learners, and we were looking at what did we need to do different from them, for them to meet their needs. So we knew that AVID Excel was the path to be able to offer something dynamic for our English learners, and that we knew that Excel, and this is what Excel has done for us, it's been able to create a belonging space for our English learners so that they're part of the total school population, and Excel is the equalizer for our English learners. So in the AVID Excel, it, our kids have been connected to the AVID family, so they're in an AVID elective, and then the Excel provides for their academic needs, which is focusing on the language development. So hence, I know they can be future ready. So we're barely also in our year two of implementation. One of our middle schools is in year one and the second in year two. You know, there's been a little bit of a bumpy road to get started. Sometimes it's not as easy as we think, uh, but it's very doable. So um, the next slide, Sasha, please. So when you think about some tips or some advice of what we need to do when you're implementation, and I know Sasha alluded to this and so did Diana, you know, the selection of the teacher is crucial. So, you know, do you want someone who, who knows language development but who can also connect with the kids? That, that combination is crucial. And sometimes you gotta go with the connection because the kids need that feeling of belonging and then the rest you can coach. You can do the language coaching and that's part of something that I knew that I have to do with our teachers. So what we also knew that AVID Excel has to be part of that whole AVID family and it can't be separate. So it has to be part of that school-wide uh, practices. So you have AVID practices which also embed Excel practices, especially at a Title I school that has a high level of English learners and that's, what, that's the demographics of most of our Title I schools. The English learner population is about 70%. So we know that you have to embed it and it's all part of the AVID um, system. When we recruit students, we know that we have to be consistent because if you're going to be able to move the kids, you want to be have a consistent selection process that is parallel to your traditional AVID. It can't be different. Another tip that I think is really important is when you do scholar groups, your tutors also need support and training. So, you know, mostly we train our kids and our tutors in how to do tutorology and how to do the tutorials. But the scholar groups are a little bit different, and our tutors also need some training in language development. They need coaching in language development. So that has been something that has really helped us so that they could also support the students, which helps um, the students, uh, the teachers. The other thing, leadership support is very important also. Leadership, not only at the site level, but at the district level. I think we have to partner, work together, because it, it's, it's you can't do it alone. We have to do it together. And so leadership is really, really important to support them. And, and then um, the parent connection. I think that we, it's really important to bring in the parents because a lot of times, you know, parents will say to me, and that, you know, they don't really understand the rigors and all the admission processes, even the high school processes. And so as you connect with your parents and you work with them, what I found with our parents is they want to help prepare their students for the rigors and requirements of college admission, and but they also need that support. So I think that parent component is very important to make um, your um, Excel classes work. And I also think that uh, it's not just for Excel, you need it for your total AVID. So again, if it's one program, you bring them all together. And that's been my experience. The one thing that I did want to um, talk about a little bit is um, one of our teachers, I wanted to share a little story about one of our teachers, and um, she's a seventh grade uh, teacher. Her name is uh, Claire Rivelle, and she's been teaching for seven years. And she, you know, as a new teacher, she taught special ed, she taught um, ELD, she taught in the gifted program. And right now she's been teaching AVID and then AVID Excel. And then she said to me, she goes, you know, Minerva, AVID Excel is that in between. She goes, because the kids, it's a group of gifted students who have been stuck in a system that they don't belong in, she said, but instead they have adapted to over the, um, over the years. And she said, but Excel busts them out. And so I started laughing when, I, when she said that. Because she's right. She says, it's my job as a teacher to show them their talents in the educational setting. 
she says, and she goes, and let them know that they're capable of so much more. She goes, but I have to show them, I have to support them. She goes, and that's how my scholar groups support them. So she creates that environment, that culture, so that the kids can um, try and just push themselves out of their comfort zone. I love it. And then she says, uh, sometimes the kids have bad days, she goes, but my days are always good. She goes, because I know that I support them 100%. She goes, it's that reassurance that helps the students show off their smarts. She goes, instead of hiding behind a tough exterior um, in the educational system. And, she, and that's, that's what Excel does. And then she said, you know, Minerva, Excel has made me a better teacher. And it's true. She's one of our phenomenal teachers who you know, really connected to the kids and to the parents. And so Excel, for me, is that equalizer for our English learners. Thank you, Sasha. Beautiful, Minerva. Thank you so much. Um, I want to highlight um, that you mentioned that implementation can be bumpy, and I appreciate that. Um, it can prove to be a bit more challenging than maybe our traditional AVID elective implementation. And that is why we have our extended support model. So our schools that are in our districts that are coming on board, um, we do have um, an additional support piece that's, that's with that. You can find out more about that. Um, and then also, um, you mentioned the tutor, the importance of supporting our tutors with additional training and development, because they too are serving as language coaches, um, and that's true. And we do have um, additional modules that we have prepared to support that development of the tutors as language coaches. And then also, the you you know, and you and Diana both reiterating the importance of the union, a strong union between Avid and Avid Excel, really seeing that they are one on a campus that AVID Excel is an additional period of AVID on the campus, fully integrated into certification and data collection, but also seen as part of that AVID family. So I really appreciate that as well. Well, sincere thanks to both of you for taking the time and being here today. It's so much more powerful and meaningful hearing from our fabulous folks that are out in the field actually doing this work with our schools and our teachers and our kids and our administrators and families. Um, and, and you provided such meaningful testimony, and, it, and your work really does impact so many teachers, administrators, and students every day. So before we open up for questions, I would like to show you, this is a current map of our AVID Excel districts. And the good news is, is we are already in expecting, anticipating the biggest growth year yet this year. So thinking, looking at that map and thinking, could your district be a part of our expansion? Could your district even be the first in your state to lead the charge in bringing AVID Excel to support your deserving long-term English language learners? We know that one of the new ESSA key components is to support English learners by, by improving English language proficiency and academic achievement. Well, AVID Excel directly impacts and leverages this ESSA goal. So with that said, let's go ahead and take some time well, actually, let me show you this first. So if, um, when you're considering Avid Excel, here are some questions um, that you can use for your consideration if you're a potential Avid Excel district. So do you have an underachieving long-term English, um, long English learner subgroup? Have you have, um, do you have an established, uh, strong Avid reputation and feeder pattern? A commitment to college readiness for all students, including your English learners? Resources for Curriculum Professional Learning Summer Bridge Tutors, access to Title I, Title III, and your local controlled funding. And do you have someone who can serve as the AVID Excel District Leader, um, such as your, AVID, your current AVID District Director would be a perfect person um, for coaching and program oversight. So some questions to leave you with as you're considering um, implementing AVID Excel. And now we're going to go ahead and open it up for some questions. And we will turn to Kayla and see if she's fielded any questions for us to talk about. There have been so many awesome questions submitted. So I will just jump right in. And I want to uh, encourage you guys to continue to submit questions. And Diana and Minerva, just, you know, if you want to jump in, be sure to unmute yourself. Yes, um, awesome. So first question, um, what should we do next if we would like to add AVID Excel to our middle school? Well, that's a great question. Um, we would like you to reach out to excel at avid.org. 
that email is up here on the screen and express your um, your interest in um, in implementing and we'll send you the necessary information to make those next steps. Awesome. And then we also had a question around additional costs and how this works if you already have um, AVID secondary sites. Yes. Um, so AVID Excel is a supplemental contract um, and we can send you, if you reach out to us at Excel at AVID.org, we can definitely send you the most current pricing for that. And um, again, the first two years have that extended professional learning and support model. So it's a little more costly in the first two years. And then after that, it is um, the uh, benefit package cost per site. So it goes down dramatically after the first two years. Awesome. Uh, we had a lot of questions around the Avid Excel teacher. Um, what are the qualities you look for in that Avid Excel teacher? And do they need to be ESL or ELL certified? Um, I would like to ask Diana um, and or Minerva to field this question, if they wouldn't mind. Sure. So this is Diana, and um, we do look for teachers who, um, they don't necessarily have to be, well, actually in California, I think all of our, our teachers, they need to have some um, uh, uh, class certificate or language um, certification. I think that's part of their credentialing. but. Um, but in terms of maybe the content area that, that they teach, again, I just want to underscore, I think what you really want to look at is who is that teacher that's going to be able to connect with the students, um, who is going to be open, who's going to have that growth mindset, who is going to be willing to learn, be willing to um, attend the summer institute trainings and be a part of the, of the learning that happens, the professional learning that happens throughout um, the first two years and beyond. Um, so again, thinking about who that individual might be, because honestly, the language coaching that you do at the district, um, from the district level, and all the professional learning that Avid Center per, uh, supports and provides and supports with, they'll pick up on that piece. I mean, if it's a language arts teacher, uh, an, an ESL teacher, an ELD teacher, they already have that language background. But again, if they don't, if they're not able to have that connection with the students, then maybe that's not going to be the right fit. So, you know, just kind of keeping all of those, you know, uh, keep those elements in mind. And I don't know if Minerva, you want to add to that. Yeah, I did want to add, um, Diana. So one of the things, like when I think about our traditional AVID and you're looking for an AVID teacher, you're looking for that same type of teacher, a teacher who's going to connect with the kids and truly make a difference in their lives and who truly believes in the AVID system. And so because AVID Excel is part of the AVID system, you need someone who's going to say, yes, I'm going to take these kids under my wing and I'm going to move them. Because AVID Excel is an elective, and most of in California at least, all of the teachers are class certified, so they're in, under that umbrella, they are authorized to teach English learners, and then we just do the language coaching for them. Sometimes we do have language arts teachers or um, ELD teachers, we call it English language development in California, that, that do make those connections with kids, and sometimes they are the right teacher. So it's just finding that right teacher, as Diana said, which is crucial so that they can move the kids. Awesome. So um, we do have another question um, it, that popped up a couple times. Avid Excel, I can go ahead and clarify, Avid Excel is a middle school program. Um, so all of you wondering about that, you're correct. Uh, but Sasha, can you speak about uh, what high school educators can do who are interested in Avid Excel? Yes, absolutely. That's a question we get all the time is, um, do you have Avid Excel for our high school? And um, actually, originally, when Avid Excel began years ago, it started at the high school level. And as you can guess, they realized that it was it was a little bit too late to um, provide this um, resource for those kids in high school. So we moved it down into the middle school level so we can um, really provide the kids that um, support early on. And so when they get to high school, we want them to be fully integrated into the mainstreamed Avid elective class. So they're with their English proficient counterparts and really learning from them. And also, um, we just, two years ago, we implemented the Academic Language and Literacy um, resource and the new um, Strand at Summer Institute. So we highly encourage our feeder high schools to send not just the AVID teacher to the Academic Language and Literacy Strand, but also other content teachers 
that have our long-term learners, long-term English learners in their classes, so they can help um, support and develop language through their content classes and through their AVID classes. And so that's what we have to offer for our high schools is our academic language and literacy um, strand in our curriculum. Yes, Minerva. So one of the things that I wanted to do, one of the partnerships that we have at one of our schools is our high school and the two AVID Excel middle schools feed into this one high school. They, the principal there and the team there, the AVID team there, they made a guarantee to the AVID Excel students that if they complete the AVID Excel program in seventh and eighth grade, they guarantee them a ninth grade seat in AVID. And so that high school actually had to open another elective because he guaranteed those seats for them. And so that really is motivating for the students. And like you also said, Sasha, one of the things I did as a district director using Title III monies is any of my teachers at the high school who wanted to take that academic language and literacy because it really embeds integrated ELD into their content area, I, I paid for that. And that was a great motivator for a lot of our high school um, teachers to go and attend the ALL um, Summer Institute class. Awesome, Minerva. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you said about the, you know, guaranteeing the placement for the AVID Excel students who successfully complete their um, AVID Excel coursework in middle school. That's so important um, to really have those conversations that when we're implementing AVID Excel, having those conversations early on with the feeder high school saying, hey, guess what? We're implementing AVID Excel and these kids need to have a seat. So how are we going to make that happen? Let's work together. Good. Thanks, Minerva. All right, next question. Um, and we have so many great questions coming in. I just want to let everyone know that if um, we're not able to get to all of them at the end of this webinar, Sasha and I will happily work together with Diana and with Minerva to uh, sort of create an FAQ for everyone, and we can send that out with the recording. Um, so back to the questions. Uh, I understand the focus is around seventh grade, but is Avid Excel something that we can start at sixth grade? Yeah, great question. Um, absolutely. If you have a six, seven, eight middle school campus and you're beginning the AVID elective at the sixth grade, we absolutely encourage you to begin AVID Excel at the same time. And we will work with you um, to be able to um, parcel out the curriculum to be able to um, spread it out between the three years if you um, want to offer that for the three years instead of just the two. Perfect. Uh, ladies, could any of you speak to what exactly core content teachers do differently as a result of their AVID Excel training? Diana or Minerva, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I was thinking a little bit about that. Yes, yeah. sure. And hope, jump in, Diana. What I see is our core teachers, when they use the academic language and literacy, they also have a language focus in their content area. So yes, they're looking at their content standards and they're teaching their content, but they're also looking at language and how could I support the language through science or language through math and, and be very focused and specific on um, developing the academic language for the, for the students. And that's what we see. So um, in math, for example, sometimes teaching the vocabulary specifically, making sure that the students are, you know, speaking 50% of the time that they're sharing, dialoguing, thinking, and then are able to go into the math. And that, that, that's what I see in our schools. So I, I, I will add something to the conversation here is the AVID Excel teacher. Uh, well, there's two um, big rocks in, in AVID Excel, seventh and eighth grade, and it, it, we have our scholar groups and then we have our tutorials. Um, and it really is that AVID Excel teacher building that, that team and connecting with the content area teachers and bringing in experts from those classes during the scholar group um, so that the students are working through um, the content, but again, with that language focus. So we're going to be seeing the, um, and what ends, up, what ends up happening is that the content area teachers begin to, because of that relationship that has begun between the AVID Excel teacher and the content area teacher, is they're going to become, well, what, what I have seen is that they become more mindful of language, just language development, and um, integrating maybe some of those practices that we see in AVID Excel, like uh, some of the scaffolds, like academic language scripts, um, and so, and how they're utilized in AVID Excel and how they can easily be integrated into the content area classes. So the beauty of it is that 
it allows for the collaboration with the content area teachers, with the Avid Excel teacher, bringing them all in to work as a team to move language development um, forward as a school. Yeah, and it's really a mindset um, shift, really thinking the content teachers begin, you know, they begin to see themselves as language coaches and language teachers first and using content as the vehicle in which to, you know, provide language support. So it's kind of a mind shift and it becomes, you know, something that all kids really benefit from. Yes. Awesome. Another question that came up a few times is uh, the AVID Scholar groups that happen in the AVID Excel elective. What's the difference between an AVID tutorial, a collaborative study group, and a scholar group? What do they look like? What do tutors do? Diana, so I can speak to that. Go ahead. Sure, yeah. I can speak to that. Um, in, we introduced the scholar groups in seventh grade. So really, the focus is on developing um, reading strategies in the, with the students. Um, and so, as I mentioned, bringing in text from content areas, and it's the Avid Excel teacher bringing in, you know, small excerpts and really going through what are those reading strategies the students need to develop in order to be able to navigate through any text. But really, that is the, the focus. It is, um, they, they we utilize the same process, the inquiry method, um, the 30-second speech, the, um, the reflection. So all of those processes that you see in your traditional tutorial, mm -hmm. we're going to see that in the scholar mm -hmm. group. But again, the focus is on um, helping our students develop the reading strategies they need to be successful in their content, in their content classes. Excellent. Um, Sasha, this will be a good question for you. Are districts using Avid Excel to replace services provided to English language learners? Yeah, that question comes up all the time as well. Um, yes, it's, it's purely up to the district, though, um, to be able to uh, justify that and use it in the district. I know we oftentimes are asked why it's um, not part of the approved programs per state. And that's just because there are, there are 50 states. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of different um, protocols to um, go through to make that happen. So, um, but we have had districts who have pursued that and successfully pursued that, and are using Avid Excel as the um, designated period of English language development. But again, it's up to the district to decide. Diana and Minerva, do you want to expand on what I just said in in your practice? Yeah, I'll, I'll share. In our practice, in our district, um, especially middle school students, they really need the support. And AVID is an Excel class, and we see it as a support class. And so our district uh, chose to use it as an elective, supporting our English learners, and our students still get one period of designated ELD in their day. And uh, But we're considering and we're looking at eighth grade, uh, possibly if the students are you know, very close to reclassifying or meeting all the standards. And in our district, um, our deputy superintendent uh, feels it's very important that it has to be a credentialed ELA course, ELA teacher with an ELD certification to count as a designated ELD. So there's a lot of pieces to it, like you say, um, Sasha, but that's the way our district has approached it. So it, we do approach it as a shadow elective course. Mm -hmm. But I know in um, Washington State, they actually have just approved it on the list of... Right. Uh, yeah. So there are different states that are that are moving right. forward. Yep. Great question. Excellent. Um, we have a question about the family involvement. If most of the students' families are Spanish-speaking and the AVID Excel staff are not, how are they keeping parents engaged as partners? Uh, what are successes and barriers that you guys have experienced? Uh, do you want to talk about that, Diana, or else I'll, I'll you jump in? So I think what's important is your AVID Excel personnel doesn't necessarily have to speak the language of the parents. And when I look at our school, we have a lot of different languages. And so I, as a supporting my schools as a, from the district level, I try to provide the translators that they need in the languages that they need so that language d doesn't become a barrier to including the parents. Do you, see, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if I have a parent meeting 
and I'm offering a workshop for those parents. Uh, I'll provide a Mandarin translator, an Arabic translator, and a Spanish translator. I have bought for our district those translation devices, and so the, the translator uses those with, with the parents, and it doesn't seem to be a problem, but I think that leaving the schools alone and not supporting them in that way can be difficult. Some of our schools do have um, personnel that could um, either speak Spanish because that's our largest language and so then they can provide those workshops. Sometimes they offer them in single languages, the same workshop. They might offer it in Spanish and in English and then maybe in Mandarin. So we just try to support the schools. So and, and I'll jump in and I'll add um, an additional piece here in terms of um, parent involvement and parent engagement. Um, even within the Abbott Excel curriculum itself, one of our teachers, she's so clever, came up with this idea. So there's a routine in the Abbott Excel classroom. It's the academic action plan where students, um, every couple of weeks, they are uh, looking at how they're progressing in their classes across the board. They're looking at their grades, and then they're having to do some goal setting, really identifying and writing explicit and very detailed specific steps about how they're going to continue to move forward in their achievement in their classes. So our teacher decided to add a parent component to that and holding the parents accountable where the parents also have to identify an action step so that they can support their child. And so the, the onus then um, is on the student to be able to explain um, in their language what, you know, what they're doing with the academic action plan and how the parent is going to be involved and, and support it. And so they bring that back to the classroom. So, you know, just as Minerva was sharing, we do have our district support, our district interpreters, our district um, translators for those parent meetings, but then also thinking about what are some other ways that we can incorporate and just increase awareness of the, um, the happenings in the Avid Excel classroom, you know, via the curriculum. So I just wanted to share that piece as well. And, you know, you've mentioned something, Diana, about getting creative. I just want to share one little anecdote. Um, I'm, I also run the district DLAC, and, um, in California, in Orange County, this is very specific to Orange County, but Orange County um, recognizes the AVID 8th grade standouts at a really wonderful ceremony at the Angel Stadium. And it's hosted there at the stadium. It's closed and just the AVID Excel family um, attends, or the AVID family. I took my DLAC on a bus to attend that ceremony so they could see some of the other things that the county was doing for our AVID students, not just the Excel, but all of our, our AVID students. And so sometimes you can incorporate them in different activities that you're doing with your total AVID family, not just the Excel. You know, just get creative. Yeah, I'm so happy that we're um, talking about family connections since it is one of our foundational components. And in addition to these amazing ideas and our organic um, gatherings that we're, you know, when we're bringing our families together, um, we do have a series of Family Connections modules that are already pre-created as well that um, are available to our Avid Excel districts. Um, we have a pre-created module on mindset, on growth mindset, um, literacy at home, um, time management and goal setting. So that's just to name a few, but we do have some modules pre-created. And I did want to highlight one of our, our, um, our implementing districts who have um, given, have empowered the Avid Excel family so much that they have formed their own Avid Excel family council. And that council is then choosing the, the topics that they want to see at their gatherings um, during the school year. So there's a lot of power in, in bringing those families in and together. That's wonderful. Um... I think we might have time for one more question. Let's see. Um, are there any monitoring tools that assess student progress of language acquisition used in the Avid Excel class? Minerva and Diana, do you want to speak to what you're, what you're using? I mean, I can highlight our diagnostic tools that we have available with um, the curriculum that we use, we have diagnostic checklists that we go through, and that's what we use to um, analyze our, the, what we call our language bugs, both in oral and written language. Um, and then we really use the, the thematic um, quarterly summative assessments, which is a, a written response to the essential questions. We use those as assessment pieces as well. And because we're only in year two, um, Sasha, I just wanna say that's what our teachers have been using. They use the tools that are, is, 
that are provided through the Excel mm -hmm. curriculum. And it seems to be right now meeting uh, the needs of the teachers to monitor the students' progress. Yeah, good, thanks. Excellent. Well, we're pretty much right at our time. I just want to remind everyone again that you can reach out directly to Sasha or our Excel team through email. Um, you guys have sent in so many great questions. I apologize we couldn't get to them all today. Uh, but we thank you for joining us. And Sasha, I'll turn it over to you for the last word. Wonderful. Yes, thank you for choosing to be here today. This is such, it's such an exciting time for us as we are continuing to grow and um, support our language learners in all of our states. So please reach out. Um, we're ready to uh, connect with you and answer any of your further questions. And again, I really want to thank um, Minerva and Diana for taking the time to be here today. It's just so much more meaningful um, when it comes from our, our amazing leaders who are out there doing this work. So thank you so much for that. And I'd also like to thank Kayla for helping us organize this and um, thank Haley Steele again, our project coordinator for all the work that she does to help support Avid Excel. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.